Um, without any further ado, let me introduce you to Jimmy Larry. He's going to talk to you about some of the amazing things that you can see in the NGC IC catalog. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you. My talk today is about, uh, as you see, is far out galaxies in the NGC IC catalog and how this project got started. Uh, there was a recent paper came out about superluminous spirals that Steve Gottlieb brought to my attention and several months ago we were observing them and uh, these are superluminous spirals and they were out to 3 billion light years light travel time. So we tracked a bunch of them down and so we had a, a rare foggy night here in Fort Davis during our observing run. So we were sitting around the living room talking and it uh, came to I, we got to talking about it and I was curious that maybe I knew there was a few galaxies in the NGC but I was really surprised at how many after we got to studying and researching it how many galaxies with one billion light year travel time there are in the NGC IC catalog and this is how this project got started and uh, this is a picture that Larry Mitchell took, and that's Larry on my telescope. <laughs> and that's what this is all about, chasing billion-year-old light. And uh, this is a picture of my telescope in the daytime. As y'all can see, um, I can remember from my high school drag racing day, there is no substitute for horsepower. So <laughs> that's, how, that's how this got started. <laughs> And uh, after I got to studying all, all these galaxies, I was really surprised. I come to find out that I found 94 with a billion that are confirmed with uh, those red chips that are 94 galaxies with a billion light years. And I was really surprised there was that many. And what, what else I found out that really surprised me was that uh, Max Wolf, one of the uh, earliest astrophotographers, and found 66 of them. And so far I've observed 86 and I have notes and drawings of them. That's Max Wolf with his astrograph right there. The first thing I want to talk about is that a light on this? The first thing I want to talk about is the five most distant galaxies that were found visually. And uh, the first one is IC1757 and it has a light travel time of 1.07 billion light years. And it's a small galaxy right there. The edge on the side of it is 1756. And these galaxies were found by E. Bernard Professor Barnard is one of my idols. He's a southern boy like me and uh, uneducated so, and was quite a visual astronomer. The next one is IC30 that was found visually and it's 1.9 billion light -like year light travel time in Cetus and it was found by Stephen Javel with a 30 inch niche refractor. There he is with the refractor. The next one is NGC 3908. There's some controversy about this object. It was, uh, it was found by Lewis Swift, or reported by Lewis Swift, but he gave a bad position. So uh, we're not sure if this is it or not, and I've asked several people with uh, 15, 16 inch Telescope to look at this because Swift found this at a 16 inch uh, Clark refractor. He, uh, his position was bad, and Harold Corwin was, was not sure that he was even able to see this. But I, I heard today that Amelia Goldberg saw it in her 15 inch here at the Texas Star Party, and I got a note from. Uh, a gentleman in Oregon who saw it in his wife's 16-inch. So I'm pretty sure that Swift could have seen it. 
But Barbara's not so sure. She told me that she looked at it and she's not so sure he could have swept that up or not. But anyway, it's 1.10 billion light year light travel time. And that's Professor Swift with his comet sweeper. Look how he cut the legs off on this on that chair to lean on it. <laughs> and I don't know what he does with that little spotting scope there. You see it laying up against the telescope? I'm not sure what he does with that. But this telescope is lost. Nobody knows what happened to it. Okay, the next object is uh, IC 2221. It's in the links, and it was. It's also uh, was found by Stephen Javell. 15.2 mag, flight travel time 1.17, and it's the uh, it's the, the bottom galaxy there on the list. And this is the most distant that I can find so far. This is. This, I, might, I might add that this project is a, is a working project. This is a NGC 5609, and it's the little galaxy there centered, with 1.30 billion light years. And uh, the big galaxy there is R178, which was one of Lord Ross's spiral studies. So this galaxy was found by uh, I love I love this guy's name, Hendon Blood Stoney, and uh, he, he he found it with uh, the 72 inch Leviathan. But this is the most distant so far visual object. There there he is. There is some controversy about the visual objects. This is NGC 1262. If you, if you uh, Google up the most distant object, this is what Wikipedia tell you is it. But there's a controversy about the redshift on this. Then it sure looks mighty big and bright, you know, to be a billion light. If it is, it is one monster galaxy, if it's correct. But, uh, but we're trying to, I'm trying to get telescope time it won't come up till September, and uh, we're going to verify with the 107 if it's it's redshift. Now I want to talk about some uh, interesting uh, and unusual galaxies that I found when I put this catalog together. This is NGC 41 4145A, and uh, this is. Some people say it's not a traditional NGC object because it was it was found by this gentleman right here, Eric Holmberg. A lot of a lot of amateurs don't realize that he was one of the first astronomers to study interacting galaxies. When I looked at this, I looked at thousands of SDSS images. Is what this is, and you see that the galaxy on top is blue, and. Uh, is red or the galaxy below. So what that tells me that the blue galaxy, after experience of looking at all those, is, is foreground on that. But there wasn't a good red shift on the smaller galaxy below. So I contacted uh, my good friend and professional astronomer at, at McDonald, Steve Odewan, and, uh, and brought this to his attention. And uh, he asked me to contact Matthew Chatron, the lead astronomer on the HET, and see if we could get some telescope time and we'd get a spectrum of, of that galaxy. And, and here we are in the control room. There's Matt running the scope the night that we got the spectrum. This is a picture of 4145B with the HET, this is a spectrum, this is not an image. This is in the wavelengths. And if you look really close, right in here you can see where it's broke. So this would be a Houghton R galaxy. That, uh, because the red shifts are, are really 
really this and this is the image of the HET virus wavelength scan. Just watch this video. This is running down the angstrom line from 3,300 to 5,500 angstroms. This is, I think this is really cool. That you can take that virus spectrograph and make an image. Okay, so this is what we determined from, from that. That the galaxy on top is 53 million light years and the little one below is 1.29 billion. Wow. So how an R and Jeffrey Burbage would be jumping up and down about this. They wouldn't believe it. Because they, they, they would certainly want to say that that galaxy is interacting. All right, this is another interesting galaxy. It's IC 1101, which is one of the largest known galaxies. It's, it's pretty common in the, in the billion. You can see it's one billion light year light travel time, and it is a monster galaxy. Here's a size comparison I got off the internet. It shows it's 600 million light years across it, compared to M87, the Andromeda Galaxy, and, and our Milky Way. So you can see this thing is a, is a monster. And I want to add, if right below that galaxy, if anybody sees this little edge on, I've been trying to see it for about five years. I'd like to hear about it. Where is it, Jimmy? Hmm? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I'm sorry, Mark. Where, where is it? Where is it? The IC galaxy. Oh, 1101? Yeah. In what kind of place? In Virgo. Virgo, okay. Yeah, it's in Virgo. It's one of the largest uh, electrical galaxies, or one of the largest galaxies known so far. I hate absolute astronomy, but it was found by 17-year-old Lewis Swift's son, Edward, with a 16-inch refractor while his daddy was laying out there on that chair common hunting. He had his son in there looking for nebulae. And he, found, he swept this thing up. It's pretty low service brightness. This is another interesting, this is another Eric Holmberg galaxy, NGC 5914b, right there in the, in the look, and you can see the, once again the blue foreground galaxy and the red edge on is 1.01b. Next is IC 2938, which is this is this is a, a, an interesting compact cluster is what they call it. They call this a Zwicky Compact Cluster. This was, this was another Max Wolf photographically fine object here. And this is, this is pretty interesting. Uh, my notes say at 488 eggs, it was small, fairly faint, direct vision, easy, a really cool galaxy group. That's what my notes say. <laughs> <laughs> 1.07 billion light years travel time. Most of the Max Wolf finds was in Leo and Coma. He did a survey in there. And that's why all these, these galaxies are, are in that area. So most, most all of these galaxies on this list are in the spring sky. Now I'm going to uh, end up my talk I'm talking about the five most distant galaxies. And interestingly, I think they're all were found by Max Wolf, photographically. This is IC 2834. My notes say at 488 X is small, fairly faint, direct vision, round, diffuse, with an even flow. 1.46, we're getting out there now. This is the next object. Let's see what my notes say here. I see 2677, 1.57 billion. You look how small that thing is. It's also it's in Leo. 
17.5 visual mag. My notes say at 488, 613X. Small, extremely, extremely, extremely faint. <laughs> <laughs> the next one is IC 3386. As you see, is a little group there. One point six three billion light years. Another Max Wolf found. My notes say at six hundred thirteen X is extremely small, extremely faint, and uh, I can see the companion with a vertical vision. It's in calm. Hmm. The next one on the list. This is a very interesting galaxy because. Look at the size of that galaxy, IC 2657, compared to 3389. And that was at 1.63 billion. And this one is at 2.1 billion. So this is one monster right here, folks. This is, this is a really, really big galaxy. It's 15.2 visual mag, so it's within reach of Lots of scopes here at the Texas Star Party under these guys. It's, uh, my notes say it's, it's 613 eggs, it's small, fairly faint, and it and, uh, looks elongated with a brighter core. So this is going to bring us to the, the granddaddy of them all so far that I found, which is IC 4017. It's a little interacting pair there. I was, uh, it's interesting, I was, it, and it has a light travel time, as you can see up there, 2.2 billion light years. So it's really getting out of there. My notes say at 488, it's small, fairly faint, looks elongated, direct vision with even brightness. I, I tried to find a better picture of it, and of course there wasn't any, because I mean, who knows about, you know, who, what astrophotographer takes a picture of a little smuts like that, as Barbara says. So I pushed up the, uh, the Pan Stars G band image, and I uh, came across something interesting. You could see right there, hey, this could possibly be a triple interaction. Mm -hmm. So when I saw that, I sent a note to noted astrophotographer Adam Block. And he's going to photograph this with a 32-inch scope in Tucson there, and we'll see if it's a if this is a H2 knot or if it's a triple triple interaction. Something's making it mighty big to would to be seen from that far. So often, the thing when I'm observing on my telescope, that matter of fact, Larry took this picture. That's Alvin Huey there on my scope, and uh, this is, I really like this picture. Uh, I often think when I'm sitting there and I'm soaking up these photons, looking at these billion year old light travel times, and I don't know why, but I always, I think, for some reason, I think about Dorothy at the Wizard of Oz, and what she had to say. <laughs> Tells her little dog, you know, I don't think we're in Kansas anymore. <laughs> If anybody would like a copy of this list, they can get it at, uh, online at Adventures in Deep Space or Deep Sky Forum. We have PDFs on there. And uh, I'd like to say a big thank you to Steve Gottlieb for all his help and support. To Carl Sema, who made the search engines, who made this possible. Wolfgang Steinecke for providing information and emails. Matthew Citrone of McDonald Observatory for graciously granting me the telescope time. And I couldn't, I couldn't do this without my buddy Steve Odewan who puts up with all my silly questions. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all.